I got holes dug with spikes in it. You fall on one of those spikes, that's the end. So who want to take that responsibility? Taking the stick, go back and forth across the street, across the road. Who want to take that responsibility? Because I'm going to be back and forth, to the front and to the back. Now you go back and forth across the path. As we go to the now we're going to be traveling in twos. So oh. pair up one with the other. The path is too small to be a big group. We pair up in twos. We both got to stick. Yeah, you are. Are you going to do it with me? Yeah. Oh, oh right. we got to do it in rhythm. Now, we're giving signals. When I give a signal like that, everybody stop. This is to the right. This is to the left. I get the signal to get down, everybody squat down. Everybody got that? Yes. All right, we just got this one path here, then over the hill, freedom. Over the hill is freedom. I know you've come from a long way, but you can't stop now. You're almost there. All right, let's go. Do the path. No talk. afternoon. I am so happy to see everyone out here this afternoon. At this time, I would like Mayor Sandy Henley to come to the mic. Thank you, Ms. Price. I want to welcome everyone to uh, West Hampton and what we would consider our holy grail, West Hampton. Um, one, I have to say that you know, Miss Price, although she probably wouldn't want me to say it, did an outstanding job. I mean, she's been told more no than she's been told yes. So obviously, give her a round of applause. She's had, during the walk, they've had, they had woods, a wooded area that's been cut out so that everyone can make it through. She's had to make that walk, I'm sure, at least a million times to be directed exactly how she wanted it. And from the beginning, she's explained exactly what she wanted and, and, uh, and the experience that she wanted people to, to, to have. 
and when during the walk, that's the exact experience experience that I have. Actually, when I first saw her, I, I gave her a hug and just told her you know, how proud I was of you know being able to deliver on exactly what she wanted to do. Um, and she had a gentleman, Eric, during the walk, and Eric walked us through and. He explained everything. So you have to understand, when Miss Price is talking to me, I'm the guy that's creating all the doubt, right? She's like, it's going to take two hours. I'm like, two hours to walk three miles? What are you doing? And so she's like, it may be not two hours, but Eric stopped at different points, and he explained exactly what's going on, what it meant. He even showed us a place where, you know, during the walk of freedom, if someone's coming, he had to go high, right? He showed us where they'd hide and, and how they would do it. So... That experience was fantastic um, as well. We had Miss Maddox, who just got her knee replaced, I think a week or week ago or two weeks ago, who also joined us on the walk. And she took her time and she got it done. It's another proud moment that, uh, that we were able to experience, again, coming together as a group. And what I will say for me personally, what I took notice of is, you know, while we're walking, you look at the shoes that everyone has on, right? Like the sneakers. We, right now, we have, like, the best of what we can have, right? How we were dressed, whether it's color-coordinated or whatever it is. And then you reflect back to the people who are taking a walk to freedom and then maybe what they had on or how their experience was. And when we got right to the top of the hill before we came through, um, something else that stuck out to me, uh, Harriet Tubman the reenactor stated that we had to take a stick and we had to go back and forth with the stick because people would set um, they would set traps and the trap would, you know, could cut off your foot. Immediately I was like, I'm definitely the guy that would lose my foot. Right? Because I, you know, just when you when you hear freedom, you don't think about those things, right? You see this the, the light into the tunnel and you want to run through and the fact that there's a trap right there before you finalize, you know, being free is also something that, that stuck with me. So, um, listen, I know everyone's going to have a great time today. I know there's activities that Miss Price has set up that are going to be impactful to the experience of what the day is like. So please, just, listen, we, we love having you in West Hampton. Take your time. Enjoy everything that that's that's put before you, and uh, and I'll see you around. Thank you. Mama! Stay low. Find your seat. Sit down. Follow instruction. Follow instruction. We got to go. We got to go to the freedom land. Can't you feel it? Can't you see it? The community is still in the hill. Over here we have one of the best historians for Timbuktu, Guy Weston. Guy, wave your hand. You'll be hearing from him. There's so much history on this land. Appreciate why we selected this land to do this celebration. Very important. Hello, for those that don't know me, my name is Debbie Price, Executive Director for the Underground Railroad of Burlington County. I stand before you on behalf of the Board of Directors, our support team, and in memorial of Louise Calloway. We thank you for your support and you enabling us and the audience to provide a platform to continue to tell the story for the silenced and the erased, his stories, her stories, their stories, as well as give voice to the unfound and the unarchivable. We continue to tell stories by way of tours, activities such as this, collaborations with the county, with the township, with the state, presentations to the prosecutor's office, Subaru Corporation, Burlington Stores, New Jersey's Historical Commissions, 
the high schools, the junior high schools, and more. I'd like to extend an invitation to everyone to please come out to the museum. It's amazing what you will see in the museum. So what is the meaning of Juneteenth? Juneteenth is an annual holiday observing the end of slavery in the United States and marks the day, June 19, 1865, when news of emancipation reached people in the deepest parts of the former Confederacy in Galveston, Texas. June 19, 1865 was shortened to mean Juneteenth. It was the day that slavery ended two years after the Emancipation Proclamation. But for those that know me, did it really end that day? No. The Emancipation Proclamation was primarily for the Confederate States. I'm not going to go on my tour move, so I'm going to keep it short. But we celebrate June 19, 1865 on this day for the symbolic meaning of the release of slavery and freedom. And that's what you're seeing here today. When the first freedom seekers walked across that hill, their minds transitioned from one of being a freedom seeker to being free. Where are all my walkers for the first class? Yeah, they made it. They look great, too. They look great. The one thing that I did want to mention, a lot of people don't understand. When you hear the slavery movement, you often think from Maryland, Pennsylvania, and up. But this piece of land right here was a lively, one of the largest antebellum community in this state. You will hear more about Timbuktu when Guy Weston comes up to speak as one of our special guests today. So we're honored to have him as well as all of you. I want to encourage everyone to please stay because we have a lot of surprises for everyone. What you're going to see on this stage today has never been done in the state of New Jersey. And I'm honored that you're going to recognize that. At this particular time, we're going to go into our production. I'd like to formally introduce you to Pastor Terrell Person. Thank you, Sister Price. It is a privilege and an honor to be in your presence today and to be at this great event that we're having today. It's a need to celebrate our history and to know our history. And for the last 30 some years, I've been a history bug because my family has written books and let me know what our history is really all about. So today, you're gonna to get an opportunity not only to read a book, but you're gonna be able to see a living book of our story. And so today, we're gonna to be talking about if these stones could talk, they would tell a story. And you're going to get a story today that's going to make you realize that we are somebody in the kingdom of God. And so without further ado, I want to introduce this great cast to you today from Jacob Chapel and Beyond, uh, headed up by Keith Henley. I'm so thankful for them for what they're going to do and what you're going to see. So sit back and hold tight and just watch what God has done for us. Thank you very much. And one other thing before I take my take this mic because I see he's passing out mics. One other thing, for those of you who don't know anything about Jacob's Chapel, we are a 501c3 that's been doing underground railroad tours for the last 30 years. And we invite you to come and see us and we'll do a live tour for you or your school district or whatever you have. God bless you and may God keep you. Thank you, Ms. Price. You're welcome. If these stones could talk. I, I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. Oh, Lord God. I, I know I've been changed. Oh, angels here. Heaven done, sign my name. You know 
faith. This might be a wilderness walk, but don't lose your faith. Because if you lose your faith, we can end up standing. Yes.